First at four, caught on camera. A Detroit police officer under attack inside a gas station. What happens next in this video may reveal the motive for this assault. Former President Donald Trump has just touched down in Florida ahead of an historic federal court appearance. He's calling for protests, and this afternoon, police are responding. Kim? Gray skies and cooler than normal temperatures in the low 60s right now in Howell, Pontiac, and in Adrian. And rain returns for Tuesday. I'll tell you exactly when in the forecast. Brand new retail space opening up inside the city of Detroit. You can get this brand new MacBook Pro at a discount, or how about this Dell computer for as little as $140. I'll show you where and how. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon to you, and thanks so much for being here for First at 4. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew. We are getting our first look at the attack of a Detroit police officer inside of a gas station. He was trying to head downtown to work the Taylor Swift concert. Video shows two men inching closer to the officer when one decides to go for his gun. You can see the men wrestling with the officer. At one point, the officer did lose his gun, but was able to get it back. The suspects pointed a weapon at the officer before they ran off. This all happened at the BP near Joy Road and Southfield over the weekend. Police are still now looking for these two men, and they are offering a $5,000 reward for information. Well, the FBI is asking for your help this afternoon. Investigators are looking for more tips about a well-known Oakland County photographer who is facing child porn charges. David Yellen is a freelance photographer who has worked with several gymnastics academies in Michigan. Investigators found child porn files and at least 500 images on his computer and a hard drive at his Royal Oak home. Yellen also admitted to taking photos of children's feet during gymnastics events. The FBI has now created a website for the public to give information on Yellen. You can find the link on the homepage at clickondetroit.com. The Detroit Fire Department signs an emergency contract to make sure there are enough ambulances available in case of emergencies. DFD is entering a contract with Universal Macomb Ambulance Service to add 11 private ambulances to the streets. The city, when you combine that with the fire department ambulances, will be a record 40 ambulances on the road this summer. Our Sean Lay has been reporting on this EMS shortage in the city for months now, and he will have reaction to this announcement coming up on the news at 5 o'clock today. Well, we got some much needed rain this weekend and forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams is here now to tell us if we can expect more. My lawn hopes that we can expect I more, know. Kim. <laughs> I know you know it's bad when people don't even complain about rain on a weekend because we definitely needed it and we'll get a little bit more tomorrow. But right now it's dry in downtown Detroit, 66 degrees. Much cooler than normal, though, 64 in Mount Clemens, 63 in Pontiac, low 60s just about everywhere you go. We should be closer to 80 degrees this time of year. Your evening planner temperatures will fall down through the 60s and into the 50s by midnight tonight. It will be dry tonight, but more rain on the way for tomorrow. So exact track 40 radar might look like it's about to rain as it is kind of gray and overcast across many areas tonight. But that rain does not arrive until tomorrow morning around daybreak and continues off and on throughout the day. Not a washout tomorrow, but we will definitely continue to make some improvements in our drought conditions here. I'll time out that rain exactly for you coming up in the forecast. Preparations are being made right now in Miami ahead of former President Donald Trump's court appearance. A short time ago, Trump's plane landed in South Florida after hours after taking off from his golf club in New Jersey. Trump is expected to go before a judge in less than 24 hours. He is facing a 37 count federal indictment for keeping classified documents. Kimberly Hill joins us now with the security for this historic appearance. Kimberly. Indeed, yes, and Christy, good afternoon to you. Uh, former President Trump is the first former president to face federal charges, and he is urging supporters to peacefully protest outside the courthouse. Today, we got to hear from Miami's police chief as officials there increase security just in case things get out of hand. Authorities are preparing for Trump to turn himself in here tomorrow at the federal courthouse in Miami. They're hope roping off certain areas in anticipation of crowds. The 37 count indictment unsealed Friday accuses Trump of illegally taking classified 
national security documents with him to Mar-a-Lago when he left the White House. They say he stored them in unsecured boxes in a bathroom and on a ballroom stage, then tried to hide them from investigators. The FBI is looking into possible security threats ahead of tomorrow's arraignment, but sources say there's nothing credible right now. Police say they are ready. Even though we're preparing, we're bringing enough resources to handle crowd anywhere from 5,000 to 50,000, we don't expect any issues, right? So we appreciate uh, the public's help, everybody going out there and expressing themselves in a peaceful and civil manner. We encourage people to be peaceful in, in them demonstrating uh, how, they're, how they feel, and uh, we're going to have the adequate forces uh, necessary to ensure that. So we're going to be yeah, watching this totally unfold. So, Kimber, what do we know about the case in tomorrow's hearing, how this right. was set up? So, so here's how it was set up. Trump is scheduled to go before a judge tomorrow afternoon at 3. He has said he does not anticipate taking a plea deal if he's ever offered one, and he's also vowing to stay in the presidential race. The judge overseeing the case is a Trump appointee who repeatedly ruled in his favor in a related case. Judge Eileen Cannon, by the way, is also a graduate of the University of Michigan Law School. So we're getting more reaction from Washington to these charges, and we'll have more when you join us on Local 4 News at 5. All right, sounds good. We'll see sure. you then. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. Multiple people are hospitalized when a tour boat capsizes in upstate New York. The tour takes people on a boat ride through an underground cave along the Erie Canal in the city of Lockport. That's just about 20 miles from Niagara Falls. Hospital officials say eight passengers were brought into the ER and are now all stable. We do not know yet what caused the boat to capsize. The nation's largest bank, J.P. Morgan, settles a class action lawsuit with Jeffrey Epstein's sex abuse victims. The victims accuse the bank of turning a blind eye to Epstein's sex trafficking while he was a client. The suit also alleges the bank didn't comply with federal laws for years while providing services to Epstein. Epstein was arrested in 2019. He died in prison soon after his arrest. The amount of the settlement is not being released right now, but attorneys for the victims are calling it life-changing and historic. The agreement still needs court approval. Another American citizen is now in custody in Russia on drug charges. Michael Travis Leak is a former musician in a Russian rock band. He's accused of running a drug dealing business involving younger people. Leak is now being held in Moscow and will be there until his trial in August. If he is convicted, he faces 12 years in prison. Of course, you will remember that last year, WNBA star Brittany Griner spent 10 months in prison, accused of carrying hash oil. She was released as part of a prisoner swap. The State Department says it is working on Leak's release, and it said it is still committed to pressing for the release of Novi's Paul Whelan and Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Grishovich. It can cost thousands to buy a laptop, Wi-Fi, and digital services, but a new store opening in Detroit is hoping to bridge that digital divide. It's called Human IT, and it's located on Seven Mile in Livernois on the city's west side. Paula Tupman is there live, and she's going to tell us how it all works. Paula. Hey there, Christy. Okay, so this is really a very cool business model because when you have nonprofit and it meets retail with a mission, you have the ability to get digital resources into the hands of people who want them, need them, but can't always afford them. The shelves are being stocked at Human IT at West 7 Mile in Stople. The store is being prepped for the grand opening and inside things, wonderful things. Apple and Mac products, Dells, HPs, 15 different digital SKUs and the lowest price for income qualified purchases, 140 bucks out the door. Need Wi-Fi in your home? $15 a month. Don't know a mouse from a glide pad? Digital literacy training, free. Just want to buy a computer and you have no government assistance? No problem. It's a retail space, and all comers are welcome. It's connectivity for the whole. So we have printers here at the retail store. We'll have tablets here in the retail store. We also have technology here at the retail store. We offer a digital literacy course that the purchase of every computer. Human IT is able to do this because as a nonprofit, it makes deals with the government and big corporations to get decommissioned devices. They wipe them, clean them up, make them look like new, and then sell on a three-tiered system. We have a lot of grant companies such as Rocket Mortgage and GM, they donate technology to us. So what we do is we refurbish that technology and we get it back into the hands that need to bridge that digital divide. Standard means you can show that you're receiving government support and you can purchase refurbished devices that seem like new at a lower price, including a laptop like this one, 140 bucks. Brand new, it would cost you 420. If you have SNAP benefits, if you have SSI, if you're a veteran, 
any type of program that we can have show documentation for that, we can get you certified to walk out with a computer. Powerful means you can afford a little more. So a laptop that could cost, say, 620 retail, you can get that here, brand new, for that price. Or if you want it refurbished and like new, it'll cost you $345. Elite means if you're income qualified, you can get that brand new MacBook Pro for $2,700. Or if you don't have government assistance, it'll cost you $3,000. And these are brand new devices, but you don't have to drive to the burbs to get it. The neat thing about Human IT on 7 Mile is there hasn't been anywhere in the city for just anyone to walk in and purchase a device. And Human IT on 7 Mile is, will have open doors in order for people to do that. The new manager, Ed Jordan, grew up in the community, and now he's back to open the store. I've worked for big time corporations, but now coming back home to know that I can help do good and help people get caught up in the digital divide, it makes me all the worse. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. You know what's really been cool is, so the grand opening is Friday. This is Seven Mile, and you can see people looking in the window. They see these brand new windows, and they know something really big is happening. And, and, and here again, you can get something that's brand new, or you can get something that is refurbished, and all of the monies that you spend, they actually go back into the digital kitty so that the nonprofit can continue to keep buying product, to keep restocking product, so that it is or rather can be put in the hands of the folks who need it and now will be able to afford it. Christy. Love it, Paula. Access is so important. Me Thanks too. so much. Yeah.